scriberis vario fortis et hostium, Victor meoni carminis elite. That's how uh, Horace begins his uh, his ode. Uh, uh, ode number six from book one, Scriberis Vario. Vario is a, uh, is a name of a friend, uh, a rival perhaps. His name is Lucius Varius Rufus, one of my favorite names of all times. I really regret not having a son that I can slap that name on, and my daughters would probably object. But he was another poet, and here we have Horace feigning a kind of, uh, well, feigning, maybe not, you're not sure, uh, a kind of modesty, saying, nah, you don't need me to write this, you need uh, Varius, my friend Varius, my good friend Varius, he is the better poet for this particular job. And what he's talking about is, um, well, he is talking about the kind of poetry that, let's say, oh, Virgil writes um a kind of grand heroism and celebration celebration of the martial values of the roman empire and uh this is a, an opportunity for uh well horace to opine a little bit on the various modes of poetry drawing perhaps a uh, a, a more explicit example of the kind of uh, 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 advice he has for poets that he that talks about in the Ars Poetica. The, uh, the difference here is that he is doing this in a poem. He is doing this as a kind of um, uh, demonstration as well as a theory. So he's kind of melding the two in a, uh, in a very Horatian, and uh, again, I would say somewhat faux modest uh, uh, style. And the, uh, the, the poem itself is very curious for the way he weaves this kind of uh, critique with a kind of uh, humble brag, if you will. Um, one, uh, the, the translations are always a problem, especially in a language like Latin, which can be so heavily, uh, inflected, but the, uh, the, this just provides some more, uh, opportunities for puzzling out some of the mysteries of this. Uh, in the, in the one recent, um, uh, translation, you have a, uh, a, it's fairly straightforward and you get a little bit creative in the end, which, you know, we'll see. Varius, the poet of Homeric flight, shall celebrate you as victorious, brave, and the forces, exploits, marine or horse, under your command. But I, too slight for grandeur, Agrippa attempt nor that, nor Peleus's son's high stomach no surrender, nor the voyaging about the seas of double-dealing Ulysses, nor Pelops' cruel house, since modesty and the Pacific muse forbid ineptitude, lessen the praise of you, and distinguish Caesar. Who worthy to write of Mars his adamantine coat, Meriones grimed with Trojan dust, or or Tydides with Pallas's aid, a match for the gods, flippant as ever, whether a fire or fancy free, I sing of banquets and battles, of eager girls with neatly trimmed nails against the young men. Hmm. The uh, the surface understanding of this poem is that the um. Uh, that perhaps somebody has questioned or uh, made a request of Horace to write about the heroic exploits of, let's say, Agrippa. Agrippa is, of course, the, uh, the, the Roman general, the right-hand man of uh, the, uh, the Battle of Actium uh, to uh, the, the chief lieutenant, let's say, of uh, Octavian before he becomes Augustus, uh, and how to celebrate him and his exploits. Uh, he is begging off on this, Horace is. He is saying, well, I'm not really that that guy. I'm not the guy for that. You want my good friend Varius. Uh, he is making a case for 
you know, you if you're going to have all of these exploits, all of these martial uh, celebrations, all of these valorous, victorious uh, poems uh, celebrating the good warrior class that uh, that we so revere in Roman culture, you know, there are guys who do that. I do something else. And that's an interesting little uh, critique of his, an interesting notion on the aesthetics, the idea that the different modes of poetry really suit different, uh, different material and that it has to match. Again, think about the Ars Poetica and the, uh, the let's say, the, the mismatched uh, parts on a, on a horse, let's say. Um, the, uh, the idea of appropriateness is, is all over this. And here Horace is saying, I am not the appropriate choice for that material. I don't do that. And he gives some interesting, uh, examples of those sorts of things when he's talking about, uh, uh Peleus's son's high stomach, no surrender, nor the voyaging about the seas of double dealing Ulysses, you know, all of these, uh, cliches of Roman poetry, of heroic and epic poetry, the stuff that, well, Virgil was trafficking in when he wrote the Aeneid. The, um, the, the, there is a kind of vague, yeah, yada yada-ism about uh, Horace's mentioning of this. He seems to be couching them all in rather cliches, uh, somewhat, uh, you know, yeah, okay, Ulysses is always double dealing, he's always uh, polytropos, he's always uh, all over the place with that, but he's such a sneaky little bastard. Everybody knows that. It's such a cliche. Uh, and, and, and the, the sense that it's not a, it's not an epic poem unless you hit those marks. It's not a good epic poem unless you hit those marks, uh, that you have to do that. And he seems to be just tossing them out there in a kind of tired way. There's nothing particularly memorable about the couching of those, uh, those images or those figures that he's, uh, tossing around there as a kind of uh, symbol of epic poetry. It's all kind of hollow. But then you get down to that bottom few lines, that last stanza, which in this translation does take some liberties, uh, flippant as ever, uh, whether of fire or fancy free. Uh, he's saying, well, you know, I, me, I can't do all that. I'm just silly. I'm an airhead. I'm very flippant, whether a fire, uh, very passionate or fancy free, just, Hey, everybody be happy. Uh, the, you get that sense that he's saying, you know, that's not me. Uh, the, he is taking some liberties with that. <clears throat> the, uh, in the original Latin, uh, the, he gets to the, um, uh, he, he gets to that a little bit more circuitously. The, uh, or actually he gets, uh, Horace gets to it a little bit more directly. This translation sort of monkeys around with the order a little bit. But Latin is, of course, a somewhat, uh, it operates on a different set of uh, rules syntactically. So the, the order is expected to be a little bit different. And scholars can argue about what is the proper order of, of, of images in a translation. Uh, one, um, one translation that uh, is a little old, uh, but you can find it online, is, uh, is from like the, the late 19th, uh, 19th century, where he translates that last stanza as, Feasts are my theme, my, my, warrior, my warriors, maidens fair, who with paired nails encounter youths in fight. Be fancy free or caught in Cupid's snare, her tempo, her temper still is light. Which is interesting in the way he's sort of switching around uh, some of the references there, or the, the reference there. Uh, what he is still uh, begging off and saying, well, okay, I don't do that. I do uh, different things. I don't sing of warriors. I sing of something a little bit more uh, domestic, a little bit more uh, universal, perhaps. Um, I sing of warriors, maidens fair. 
Now you can see that. Well, is he saying that he's he's writing women's poetry because his warriors are women? Uh, maybe you can make that argument uh, looking through his work. Uh, but what he's doing is he's shrinking that battlefield down to something human, down to something recognizable, down to something that uh, that he does see on a regular basis. And he lives a fairly comfortable life, and he doesn't go out to the battlefield terribly often. So he's uh, he's writing something a little bit more immediate, a little bit more personal. Instead of these bloated cliches floating around out there, he is talking about something that everybody can recognize. And that simple male-female dynamic that, uh, that uh, is charged with sexuality and, and that brilliant little image of paired fingernails. Just think about that. It's so small. It's so precise. Um, and, and it captures something of the weaponry of, uh, uh, of that relationship between the man and the woman that all of the, uh, the, the hoopla about, uh, Agrippa and Ulysses and, and, and all of that, it, it, that, that is just all drifting away, but the precision and the focus and intensity of that relationship where, fingernails are pressing into a young man, uh, suggesting perhaps those are a weapon and that she is fending off, or perhaps she is clutching like, you know, a bird's talons, perhaps. It's a little uncertain. And significantly also in that, uh, in the older translation, the fancy free um, is, uh, that is attributed to the girl more than the poet. It's, uh, it's a little bit more vague here. Maybe my reading is a little different. I don't know. But he's, uh, but the grammar itself is a little bit more complicated. The, uh, and it's, you know, it's a jump ball really as to, uh, how you want to interpret that at that point. But what is obvious is that after saying, well, okay, you know, that kind of writing is great. What you want is my friend Varius. He can do it. It's not so much of an accomplishment because, or a compliment, because he is saying that that kind of writing is bloated, is vague, it is just empty cliches, one after the other after the other. I'm doing this other little tiny thing over here. Oh, don't worry about me. But I'm doing it with such precision, such punch, such fraught dynamics of passion and intensity that I outmatch all of that other stuff. All of that other stuff is silly. You go and you talk about how passions drive great battles. I'm going to show it in a miniature, recognized, artistic way. A way that you're going to have to dwell on a little at yourself. You're going to have to interpret and realize that that battlefield is perhaps just a microcosm of that grander battle, battlefield. But which one is going to have more immediate reference, more immediate power for the average reader? Well, probably those fingernails. Horace is queuing into something very, very powerful in art. And he's doing it in a way that's saying, well, you know, all art is kind of the same. But he's saying you need to read into the material. And if you do that, then the art opens up to you. Instead of just slam bang flashes of glory and patriotic fervor waving around. Horace is showing and telling what great art can be.